Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome to my channel, Do Ministry Gaming. And today I'm gonna to be doing a mini build guide or a quick update on the current character that I'm playing in 3.14 Ultimatumly, which is a fire-based elemental hit raider. I'll also have a link to a pace bin for the path of building in the description below. And the reason why I'm doing this right now is because I've actually gotten a number of requests uh, for a build guide for this character, and uh, which is something that I will do. Uh, but I'm not doing it imminently because the character still has a long ways to go. Uh, this isn't the final product by any means. Uh, and I think uh, I'd rather have it more complete in a complete state before I put out a build guide. Uh, because as always, I want to make sure my build guides are very high quality. And I want to make sure that, you know, whatever I put forward, if people are following it or, you know, attempting to create the same character, that they're having a good experience. And so I wanna make sure that I have all the details in that build guide. And so uh, I'm not quite there yet, but I will be sometime this week. So I will put something out. So um, uh, you can check that out when that happens. But for now, uh, lots of people have asked, at least even for the pacement. So what I'm gonna do is just do a quick update, walk everyone through sort of mini build guide, like I say, very quickly. And uh, and so that you can use the pacement if you'd like to uh, make a similar character. Now, in the current state of the character, even though I say it's not as complete as I want it to be yet, because I've got fairly high standards for my characters, it is good enough. Like, it's in a very good spot. It can do all the content that I need it to. And as you can see from the highlight clips, it can do tier 16 maps, no problem. It can do Cyrus 8. Uh, it can do uh, Awakening 8 Conquerors. It can do Shaper. It can do Elder. Now, I haven't done Uber Elder yet because that's not something that I farm that much. Um, and so I don't know how it fares against that. And the other thing I'll say is I did attempt one Maven this league. I'm also very unfamiliar with Maven. I only killed it twice last league. Um, and so mechanic-wise, I'm not that sound. And, and uh, I would probably personally want a little bit more damage before I tackled Maven again. And so, you know, in its current state, like I say, there's still a lot of ways it can be improved. Uh, but but right now, i am got some other goals in mind. I'm farming a headhunter right now. And so... Uh, for the next little while until that happens, I'm probably not going to be upgrading the gear uh, at all in this character anymore because, like I say, it can do everything I need it to until I can get that currency farmed up. Also, in the current state of the character, I would say it's about 10% of what it can be damage-wise. Uh, so El Elemental Hit, this particular build that I'm playing, has a very high ceiling in terms of damage, which is one of the reasons why I decided to play it this league. I've always wanted to play Elemental Hit for a very long time, league after league, and I keep pushing it off. And so I decided finally that I'm going to do it this league. And so whatever you're seeing right now on my character in my POB, uh, you know, depending on how you have the settings, two to four million Shaper DPS, uh, that's about 10% of what I think I can get the character to. Uh, and so um, when the official build guide comes out, of course, I'm going to have all that end game gear and I'm going to talk everybody through all that and uh, what it takes to get to that level. Uh, but right now it's at about that sort of two to four million DPS uh, and it's probably about 10%. But like I say, it does all the content I need it to. And so even if you were to put this character together, as you can see from the clips, you probably won't be too terribly disappointed. Uh, it's just that there's so much more you can improve on and I want to get there uh, before I put that official build guide out. The one last thing I'll say in the intro here is that this character currently has about 20 to 25 exiles worth of gear as per week one prices when I bought all the gear. If you were to put all the same gear together now, uh, I don't know for sure because I haven't looked at all the prices recently, but I would think that you can get away with about 15 exalts, uh, maybe even slightly less than that to get to the exact same point. Now that's enough of a precursor for the character, I think. Uh, why don't I jump right into the character and just quickly, like I say, mini build guide version. So I'll, I'll very quickly talk through everything. And then in the official build guide, I will do all the detailed explanations of everything that I've chosen. All right, so I'll fo follow the format of my usual build guides, but I'll do everything just like at lightning speed versus the detailed discussions that I normally have. 
But basically, this character is an elemental hit character. It's a fire-based elemental hit. So for those who aren't familiar, elemental hit does three types of elemental damage and uh, rotates between the three, fire, cold, and lightning, and then has some other mods associated with the gem. Uh, and this is a fire base, which means I convert all the cold and the lightning to fire. And uh, the reason for that is because there are some threshold jewels for this skill called combat focus, which allows you to force basically uh, a certain element okay each one of these there's three different types of combat focus jewels and each one of these will uh, basically says uh, cannot choose a certain element right so if I use cannot choose cold and cannot choose uh, lightning which are the two that I'm using then every time I shoot elemental hit it will always be fire so that's what we're doing here and then we're doing a bunch of damage conversion to fire through avatar of fire uh, and uh, the way that works is the elemental hit, even though you can't choose cold or lightning in this particular build, like every shot is fire, uh, any cold to fire or lightning to fire damage conversion will take that portion of the skill gems damage and convert it to fire every time you shoot that fire arrow. And so uh, damage conversion is a very, very big part of elemental hit, no matter what um element you're playing it can be a significant damage boost and with avatar of fire avatar of fire gives 50 percent of cold and lightning converted to fire so basically 50 percent of the cold damage and the lightning damage on elemental hit are converted to fire even though every time you fire it is only the fire element and not the cold or the lightning element so that's how this fire based elemental hit works now, you have a single target skill and a map clearing skill. They're a little bit different setup, two different six links. And so for the single target, you're running elemental hit with combustion for more fire damage, inspiration for the inspiration charges and more elemental damage, elemental damage with attacks, which is just a big more multiplier, elemental focus and barrage for the single target. Now for the uh, mapping, it's pretty much the same setup with uh, you know clear skills. So elemental hit, combustion, inspiration, Elemental damage with attacks, the four sort of key ones, and then um, running chain and GMP for the clearing ability. Now onto the auras, uh, you're running them with Enlighten, of course, or however you need to manage your mana. And the three auras I'm running are Skitterbots, Precision, and Petrified Blood. So I'm going to talk a little bit about these. Uh, so first of all, I'll just get this one out of the way. Precision, any attack-based character, especially if you're bow, you know, uh, running precision with a couple of accuracy nodes on the tree is enough to cap your um, accuracy. And so that's pretty much a must-have. Otherwise, you're going to need to put a ton of accuracy on your gear, which is kind of annoying. So this is a great aura to run uh, just to make that easy. Uh, then there's a Skitterbots, which is basically a damage aura for you. Uh, because your avatar fire and only fire base, there's no way for you to shock uh, or chill enemies. And so Summon Skitterbots does both of those. So shock gives you that additional more damage multiplier as well. Chill, which gives you that defensive element. But not only that, for each elemental ailment that you have on an enemy, you're doing 10% more damage per elemental ailment. That's a part of of the elemental hit skill which is the last line there and so um, having shock and chill if you otherwise wouldn't have it is giving you also 20 percent more damage for your elemental hit so skitter bots is absolutely incredibly strong um, in this build because like i say for avatar fire there's not really another easy way to get shock or chill and so some of skitter bots are very very strong there now petrified blood now i've um I've made a separate entire video talking about this. So if you haven't seen that video yet, make sure you check it out in the description below. I'll have a link because this skill gem has proven to be very good for my character. Um, this is a dodge based character. Uh, and uh, while dodge is great when you're not getting hit, when you do get hit, it really sucks, especially the way that I've got you know, my character right now. I don't have a lot of defensive layers underneath my dodge. And so my problem was, um, every time I didn't dodge, I basically got one shot literally by everything. I had about 5,000 life at one point. It didn't do anything, still getting one shot. And so I had to switch into this petrified blood skill. I'm not going to talk about it here. It's just, it's really significantly improved my survivability. Uh, check the video out in the description below if you want to know more. But, uh, I started with anger before and I actually dropped anger 
uh, for a fire-based elemental hit character to fit in Petrified Blood. It's that good. Uh, and so I'll just leave it at that. But otherwise, if you're not running this, you would run Anger and you'd have to get a little bit more uh, mana reservation reduction uh, through either an Enlightened 4 or the uh, Charisma Cluster uh, on the uh, Passive Tree, which is right here. All right, and then on to the sort of single target debuff uh, setup. Uh, I am running the typical Arcanist brand with Sniper's Mark, with Wave of Conviction, uh, and Combustion. And then for the utility setup, I'm running um, a Second Wind with Dash. I'll put that up here. Dash with Second Wind, as usual. Portal, because I love, I hate Portal Scrolls. Uh, Blood Rage, which I actually no longer use, but before I was using it for Frenzy Charges. Uh, and then Vol Grace, uh, which is very, very important for your survivability as well. Now, like I say, this is not the complete character yet. So eventually, I think I will swap some of this out for another defensive layer, maybe some kind of cast one damage taken in Immortal Call setup uh, or something like that. So uh, stay tuned, maybe some Steel Skin. I don't know. Uh, we'll see. But uh, I will probably make some adjustments there. But because you're running two six links, you are pretty uh, socket limited in terms of what you can fit into the build. And you have to have your auras and you pretty much have to have Arcanist brand. So it really comes down to that last four link that you can play around with. Now onto the gear for the bow. I'm running a plus three bow gem. So plus one, plus two um, bow. Uh, and this is where I put my single target. Uh, this is the exact same bow that I was using for my Toxic Rain League starter before I switched to the Elemental Hit. This is a very similar bow in terms of requirements. The only difference is Toxic Rain does not need crit chance and Elemental Hit does. And so when I bought it for my Toxic Rain character, I was very conscious about also having T1 crit on the bow because uh, I knew I was going to make the switch. But anyway, pretty simple plus three bow skill. Uh, what you want is attack speed, high attack speed, high crit. Uh, and then the ability to craft um, elemental penetration and then with as many plus gems as you can. The ultimate endgame bow, it's not going to look like this, but the current version of this bow is this. So the ultimate endgame bow is going to have a, a much, um, it's going to look a, a lot different than this. So just know that for when the final build guide comes out. Uh, and also these are a fairly easy cra easily crafted with fossil crafting. So I have a... a uh, a video on that in my channel for a League Star Toxic Rain Bow crafting method if you wanted to craft this yourself. But buying it is also not that expensive. Uh, then on to, let's start with the gloves. Uh, so these gloves are the Embalmer gloves. We've got some life, some chaos resist is really what you're using them for. Uh, and then the Implicit, the dual corrupted. I got the Ellie L weakness on hit and critical strike chance. I think I bought these for like 40 chaos in the first week of the league and the reason why embalmer just very quickly is like say life chaos res is great but the all but the reason is early on in the league getting curse enemies with elemental weakness on hit it's very easy to get it on the embalmer gloves these are very commonly corrupted for that reason and they're very cheap uh, relative to everything else uh, any other way you can get elemental weakness on hit anyway um and so these came with 0.77% crit chance as well, which is crazy. Uh, and like I say, they were only like 40 C. So it's super cheap to get something like this. And I've been using it since. Um, there are better gloves. Eventually the end game is going to be like calling strike and, and what have you. But uh, but for, you know, League Star or Intermediate, I mean, this is such a great option. And uh, before I move on here too, I've, I'm actually running three curses on this build, which is a lot of the power in the current state. Okay, so Ellie weakness comes from the glove. And so we might as well hop onto this ring. This is simply just a flammability on hit ring. So the second curse is flammability. And the third curse is that uh, is this sniper's mark from the Arcanist brand. And so I'm running triple curse here. So I do need additional curses as well, which is a good segue to the chess piece. Chess piece is basically life and additional curse. This is where my second curse comes from. And then we will move on to the amulet which is Azov's Blood. This is a mandatory piece for this fire-based build in particular uh, because, because of the Avatar of Fire. As Ranger, there is not a feasible way to get to Avatar of Fire, which is up here. However, if you were playing this build with an Elementalist or an Inquisitor, which is not uncommon, uh, you can grab Avatar of Fire up here on the tree. But as a Ranger, you pretty much have to have it um, 
and it's huge damage because of that 50% cold and lightning conversion. And then the ash uh, that gives 20% uh, or more damage. And then the 10% uh, damage penetration as well for fire. So fantastic amulet. I must have. But anyway, the third curse comes from allocating whispers of doom here. Um, if you don't want to run tri curse because it is a little hard to get three additional curses, um, you don't have to. There's some very other good anointment options as well. Uh, for the amulet, like I think Lava Lash, Lava, Lava Lash down here is also very good. 8% uh, damage penetration and 30% fire damage with attack skills. So you can choose to run that if you don't want to run Tricurse. Now onto the helmet, uh, just life resist and uh, elemental hit attack speed enchant. That one's pretty important. It is a pretty big damage boost. Uh, basically, anything with attack speed is a good damage boost. Anything with uh, penetration, exposure, uh, and then the, the tri curse is sort of the core of the damage for this for this build and uh, and elemental damage conversion. Uh, the other ring is just life and resist to help my life and resist. Uh, belt, life and resist. And then boots, life and resist. And then dodge anywhere I could get it. Um, dodge is an important, important defensive letter. This is a dodge character. So you want to get dodge cap as much as possible. So I got a little bit on my chest piece, a little bit on my boots. Uh, and then for the quiver, quiver is a place where you can get a lot of damage um, typically. So here, attack speed, crit chance, elemental damage with attacks. You can actually also roll crit multi on quivers um, and what have you, but I opted for this one. It was just a good price balance, life and resist as well. And so this was a fantastic quiver that I picked up early on in the league as well. Onto the flasks, uh, Dying Sun is pretty much a massive damage boost with plus two projectiles. Helps with both the clear and the single target barrage massively. Uh, and so pretty much mandatory. Wise Oak is fantastic for defensive and offensive capabilities. So that's great. Then just a Seething Life Flask. Uh, a Quicksilver Flask and a Quartz Flask. Like I say, I need this also to get as close to Dodge Cap as I can get. And the phasing is absolutely fantastic, but you get phasing from Raider as well already by default. So this is really just for the Dodge here. Uh, in certain circumstances, I'll also run a Jade Flask instead of the Quicksilver Flask uh, for the evasion. Uh, but that's up to you how you're feeling about your character and whether you're dying or not. Like I say, after the switch to Petrified Blood, I've been dying a lot less. So I'm more comfortable running a Quicksilver Flask now. As you can see, I'm 93 uh, and I'm I'm actually leveling. And so um, it's been working out really well. All right, onto the passive tree. You are a raider here. Now, uh, the ultimate version that I'm planning is probably actually going to be a Deadeye when that final build guy comes out. But uh, for the time being, I'm running a Raider. Raider just has a lot of great things about it. Um, you come up here for Avatar Veil and Quartz Infusion. So more dodge and phasing, permanent phasing. Phasing is just so good, especially in ultimatums. Phasing is, is a must have for ultimatums. If you do not have phasing in ultimatums, get it. No, basically, no matter what character you are, it is super fantastic. Uh, Avatar Veil is so good for this build. Immune to elemental ailments when phasing, which is all the time because you have permanent phasing now. Uh, that is just amazing quality of life. Uh, and then on top of that, nearby enemies have exposure 20%, which is a massive damage boost. And also nearby enemies have less accuracy rating, um, which is you know just going to help you survive a lot longer on these boss fights. Uh, and you are running point blank as well down here for the more damage. So single target boss fight, you are standing pretty much right up against the boss. You're going to get the um, point blank. You're going to get the exposure and you're going to get the less accuracy rating uh, from the enemies. So very, very good there. And then this is kind of, I've done a split here only because of where my character is at right now. In the final version of this, you're either going to take all the way Avatar of Chase or all the way Avatar of Slaughter. Uh, I think I would personally go Avatar of Slaughter because you can get Onslaught elsewhere. Um, but uh, right now I'm having to split uh, because I need Way of the Poacher for Frenzy Charges and the Maximum Frenzy Charge was also fantastic. Uh, and uh, I know you can get Frenzy Charge on Kill elsewhere, but you cannot really get Frenzy Charge on Hit uh, anywhere else. 
and I have six frenzy charges. And so it's a massive part of my single target damage. And so I needed, you really need this if you want frenzy charges for your single target. And right now, because my, my damage is only 10% of what I think it can be, uh, I really need that extra damage just to get through the bosses. When my damage amps up like crazy, uh, you know, maybe you can go Avatar Chase, like I say, if you want, or uh, or I'd probably keep this anyway and go Avatar of Slaughter. But anyway, that's why I have Way of the Poacher there. And then I have Rapid Assault for Onslaught and Onslaught Effect. But anyway, your uh, Raider, uh, for now, you're coming over here. This is a pretty standard tree. It looks a lot like the Toxic Rain tree, actually. Uh, you come down here, grab the Life Nodes to start. Uh, you pop up here for the quick Primal Spirit mana. And then you come down here. Down here, you have the Cluster Jewel. Like I say, you run Point Blank. Uh, you run Wind Dancer for the defense. You're coming down here for uh, Lethality um, for the crits and the Primeval Force for the Elemental and the uh, and the Penetration. Then you're coming up here. You're uh, grabbing the entire bow, uh, bow clusters here for King of the Hill, uh, crit chance and damage, and then Master Fletcher attack speed and accuracy. Uh, and so that's a very good cluster to grab. Herbal Herbalism for the life. Grab the Frenzy Chart. Grab the um, Jewel Socket for Combat Focus goes in here. One of them. Crit Multi Cluster there. Uh, Acuity is also a must-have if you want to cap off your accuracy. Uh, and um, this, is, this is basically the accuracy node on top. You get that basically you get this along with precision and the other accuracy nodes from the bow. You're um you're uh, hit capped. And then um acro phase acro for the dodges. Uh, right here, I'm running Lion Eyes Fall. You can run another Cluster Jewel setup here. You're getting pretty tight on points, but I'm running Lion Eyes Fall, which allows me to get the Claw Arm, the Claw Clusters here, which is a lot of Leech, Life and Mana Leech, as well as Crit and Crit Multi. Oh, sorry, Soul Rake is the uh, Leech, and then Crit and Crit Multi. So this is a fantastic arm to get. In the final version, I may run a Cluster Jewel setup here, which... which um, which could be equivalent in power, but for now, uh, just for you know cost and and ease, I'm running uh, the claw soul raker arm there. Then um, just to finish this all, I guess up here another frenzy charge, life blood drinker, and then the last jewel socket here. And then over here, you're coming grabbing this jewel socket. I'm running a watcher's eye in here. Uh, attack speed affected by precision. Okay, because I'm not running anger anymore. I don't need an anger watcher's eye. I'm running a precision watcher eye now. There's three precision rolls you can get. You can get attack speed, you can get crit multi, and you can get just straight up damage with precision. All three of these translate to about the same damage output, okay? They're, they're all the same. So if there's a difference in price, which there was when I bought this, the crit multi ones were selling for way more than the attack speed ones. Uh, buy the cheapest one out of the three, okay? Uh, they, are all, they are all the same power. And then onto the, uh, the cluster jewels. Uh, for the large cluster, I'm running a tri cluster here. Um, I'm running disorienting display. I needed some way to blind. Uh, this is only 10%, but it's something. Uh, and so with dodge based characters, you really want blind as well. Then um, smoking remains is another sort of defensive one. 10% uh, chance to create a smoke cloud on kill. And so uh, that is there for that. And then uh, Prismatic Heart is just straight up elemental damage and Ellie resists. For the medium cluster jewels, uh, you're, I'm running eye to eye and repeater. Repeater is really the key one, which is damage and attack speed. And then eye to eye just for some extra damage. And then the other one is also repeater. And then with streamlined, which is uh, damage and speed. And then the final jewels, uh, I've just you just get any type of crit multi, crit chance, or attack speed that you can get. Uh, as many of those as you can, and life if you can also. But this one in particular, I'm running Corrupted Blood Cannot Be Inflicted on You. Um, I am running a Divine Life Flask of Staunching, but I'm finding I was still dying to Corrupted Blood, especially in Ultimatums, and so I picked up one of these. They're not cheap this league, uh, but uh, this has completely solved my Corrupted Blood dying problem in Ultimatums. And then um, this one here, uh, Cannot Be Hindered. Also, I was getting hindered. Uh, and so uh, I bought one of those. All right, and then Pantheon. Uh, as usual with my bow characters, I really like running Soul of Lunaris and Soul of Rislatha. This is primarily for like Cyrus fights and longer boss fights where I need my flasks to come back up. But uh, Soul of Lunaris is really the defensive one that I really like to run myself. And then for the bandits, uh, you are taking the two 
bandit points. All right, guys, so there you have it. Just a very quick update on my character. Like I say, the POB will be in the description below so that you can look at it. Uh, I'm not making any more changes for the, to this character for quite some time now because I am uh, farming a headhunter right now. I'm a little over halfway, and so I'll probably be another week or two of playing this exact same version of this character. Now, after that, I'm going to start upgrading the character and getting to the point that I want to. There's actually a couple ways I want to uh, potentially get this to. Uh, something more standard, which is sticking with the fire elemental hit version and scaling that all the way. Like I say, currently I'm only about 10% of the power, expected power that I think I can get to. So I can either scale that. That's pretty standard, though. There's a lot of build guides out there for that already. Uh, but the other one is I'm thinking about some other ways to play this character. Uh, I'm thinking about getting this into a self-chill version uh, with a trinity set up between lightning and cold. And so if I get that, if I decide to go that way, that will be very exciting. It'll be new, it'll be uh, very cool. And I think it will work quite well also. So uh, it's to be determined. I might even do both. And if I do, maybe I'll put out two build guides or something. But, um, you know, for the final build guides, look for those to come out maybe in a couple weeks even. I'm sorry, I could say I have to get this uh, headhunter done up. Um, just some weird goal that I decided to set for myself far too late into the league. And so I'm way behind. But anyway, um, look for those. But in its current state, like I say, still does everything just fine. So even if you built this character, it's on par with a lot of other characters that are in that 2 to 4 million DPS range, which is a very good number to have for Cyrus and Shaper and Elder and what have you. And so I'll leave it at that. Thank you everyone so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. Also stream on Twitch, Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Times are in the description below if you want to come and check out how the character plays. Thanks again, and I'll see you next time.